If anyone's here to speak on an item that's not on the agenda, I need you to fill out a form if you're, if you're here to speak. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Local Planning Board Agency agenda, I mean, uh, meeting. It is now 6.30. Uh, please make sure you turn off your cell phones. I will do the same. Can you do a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Um, present tonight, we have Daryl Lopez, Lawrence Wright, Curtis Gashlin, David Pollock, Tommy Minton, and absent is Kristen Switland and Kathy Moore. Thank you. Next thing on the agenda is approval of minutes from October 16th. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion approved. Uh, public comments, we have no public comments tonight. Uh, public meeting items, we also have none for tonight. Uh, public hearing is resolution number 365118, informant center special exception use order. Is the applicant present? Can you come up and uh, state your name and address? I'm the only one here, huh? Pardon? I said I'm the only one here. I feel pretty special. Um, yeah, I'm Tom Andronis, uh, the owner of 500 um, Geneva Drive. Uh, we're hoping to put a building in there, a commercial building, um, about 19,000 square foot. Uh, it's already been through the architectural board. Um, a little bit about what we do. We have um, a business or businesses that are related to infotainment systems, which used to be called navigation systems, and that's the new term nowadays. So anyways, uh, it's called Infotainment Center. Um, we, uh, we are probably the largest um, car um, navigation system, infotainment system, upgrades in the world. We sell thousands of these things all over the world. We buy, sell, repair. Um, we doubled our business in the last year. We're excited about moving to Oviedo. Um, it was difficult to find a piece of property in Oviedo. Um, so we did somewhat have to choose that particular property. It's not the nicest area. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the area over there by the Sunoco. Um, so, but you know, it is what it is. There's some wetland issues that we're dealing with, uh, but it's going to work. So unfortunately, the mistake that I made was uh, buying this property, C2, knowing, knowing that we need warehouse. So we're looking for a special exception to, uh, to add warehouse to this particular parcel. Um, I would say probably one-third of what we're going to be using in the building is warehouse. and. <laughs> Uh, it will be navigation systems, you know, radio type things. So, um, if you have any questions, does anybody have any questions? Mr. Chair, Let's go ahead. Mr. Wright. Um, the warehouse part of it. I mean, are you guys doing um, installs there, or is it just? It's it's internet sales. I'm sorry. Internet sales. Internet sales. Yeah, there's. We rarely get somebody that comes in and buys anything. It's a situation where, hey, I happen to live in Maitland, and I noticed you guys are on the corner, and they pull in. But 99.9% per .9 is Internet sales. So it's kind of a niche business. It's high tech. Um, what's, your, what's your workforce like? Um, presently, we're at 22 employees. We do have offices in Dallas and Jacksonville. Um, but we're expanding. It's a small, high-tech business. We wanted to choose Oviedo. Brought my children up in Oviedo. They went to Lawton, Jackson Heights, Oviedo High School, Florida State. So um, we wanted to remain within Oviedo. Uh, you know, in our staff report, we um, are looking at the site plan that had uh, three phases. Uh, yeah, three that's three phases. There has been discussion, at least in our staff report, that. Um, that's changed. Can you give us an indication as yeah. to what the changes are you're looking at? I think a typical um, developer looks at not parking. You know, we want to cram as much building as possible in there. 
and that was the original intention. But as we started looking at parking, um, it just didn't work out. So we went from three phases down to two phases, and um, and it still required underground retention for that uh, um, that second phase. So that's whenever we started really looking at monies. It does it really make sense if we were going to sell that small little parcel back there um, to someone to, um, to and then be required to do underground retention. So when we took a look at numbers, it didn't make sense. Um, so at this point, we're redesigning and we're only going to have our building up front. We're going to have a small little storage kind of warehouse in the back if we could approve. And uh, there's going to be a, a retention pond in the back. That's that's the plan. Do you have any idea of size? I mean, we're looking at the same size building, warehouse, as one of these footprints that we hear. No, it's a, it's a lot smaller than that. It's like 50 by 60, you know, 3,000 square feet. And we'll go through the architectural board for that when we get to that particular point. But it's one of those things that, if, to, to totally be honest with you, if we don't get approval to, to do warehouse, then we're going to have to punt. We're going to have to try to sell the property and go somewhere else because it is a big portion of what we do is storage, you know, of these systems. Mr. Chair? Yes. A couple questions. Um, as far as if most of your business is Internet sales-based and uh, I'm assuming to deliver the product to shipping. And you'll be doing shipping from the warehouse? Oh, yeah. And then how, how is your product shipped? What it's sort of UPS, FedEx come. Oh, UPS, FedEx. All what day. time of the day uh, or night? Um, I don't know. Probably they typically come right around noon, I oh. guess. Well, UPS comes right around noon, FedEx a little bit later. You know, Primarily then, daytime. Oh, yeah, for operation. sure. No, we're, we have like 9 to 5, 30 type okay, business. So the facility is basically open 9 to 5, not overnight? No, nothing overnight. Okay. And we want to do LED lights. You know, that's something that's important to us. You know, saving some energy. We want to have a charging station, um, you know, on site. We want to make it nice. I mean, come on, guys. If you come from downtown Oviedo and come down towards Geneva, there's not much really going on there. So I think it's going to be one of those wow type things when people come around that corner and they're going to see our building because it is something that's, I don't know if you've seen a picture of it, but it is a really, really nice building. Along that note, um, the building itself, the two-story building, where is that located towards the back of the property or towards the front? No, it's towards the front. It's just so the, adjacent to the text or the uh, Sunoco. Okay, so it'll be pretty close to the road. Yes. Is there any um, lighting plan for the top of the building or to keep the building lit at night in any way? Yes. Okay, so the entire two-story structure will be lit in the evening? Yeah, they have... LED lights actually on the on the building and the then building. within the parking lot. And then uh, how many employees do we have at that facility? Um, presently, 20. In that facility that's going to be? In that window? facility. Okay, and those hours are the 9 to 5 hours? Yes. And then plus the uh, the shipment to and from. And do you receive shipments as well from FedEx and UPS? Oh, primarily? yeah. I mean, we, we get stuff from all over the world. Okay. Um, but that's all the questions I have. Any other questions? Thank you. Sure. Actually, oh, go ahead. So, I mean, just to follow up, because that was going to be my question, was how your deliveries would be, because like you mentioned, that corner coming around, that if there was going to be, my concern was going to be if there were large semis that you were expecting to be doing nah. drop-offs, that if we could anticipate needing possibly a turn lane to be added to that property, because <coughs> as you come around that corner, if there's a large semi just kind of sitting there, you won't notice it until you're on top of it. So. Yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird area because of that that curve, but you know it's already been pre-planned. We only can come in one way and out another way. Where you can't, we can't leave the the uh, the facility by making a left onto Geneva. In fact, I was the one that suggested that. I I just don't think it's real, you know, safe in that particular area. So we only can come in and, and go out to the to the what would that be west? No, east. So something else I just wanted to bring up is if you look at the adjacent properties, the one to the west office warehouse, we have a Sunoco um, interstate battery. If you're familiar with that, it's, it's to the east. 
Um, to the south is the USPS uh, warehouse. So we're surrounded by warehouse, essentially. That was my only question. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. you can speak. Okay. Uh, can Mr. Chair, one more last question, if I may. Okay. Um, as far as the, uh, I mean, I understand you want as much square footage in the warehouse and you want the height, but are, are, there, are there any barriers to creating a, one, a larger footprint on a one-story facility versus a two-story warehouse facility? Um, probably not because the property itself is really unique where we're going to have to bring in so much fill because uh, it just drops off about five and a half feet from Lloyd Lane going west. And, you know, naturally there's setbacks for the wetlands and whatever. Um, if we could have done that, it would have been perfect, but there's just, there's just not enough space. So you're not able to do a one-story storage facility? No, we just can't. Which would be nice because you don't need an elevator and blah, 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 blah. But, yeah. you know, we were forced down that path. Understood. No for the others? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can we hey, this is the third staff? time you said thank you. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. He's very polite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, <clears throat> this is a request for the local planning agency to recommend approval of resolution number 3651-18, which approves the special exception use order number 201-18 for the infotainment center um, business. The property consists of approximately 3.64 acres and is located at 500 Geneva Drive, uh, approximately 200 feet from the intersection of Geneva Drive and Lake Charm Drive, Lloyd Lane. Um, per section 3.3 of the Land Development Code, the LPA shall review the application uh, and make recommendations to City Council as to whether or not to approve, deny, or uh, approve with conditions the requested exception order. Um, the site is currently uh, commercial on the future land use map and also has a C2 zoning district. As Mr. Andrunas mentioned, per the city's table 4.1, 4 under the C2 zoning district, warehouse storage is a use that is only permitted through the issuance of a special exception use order. Uh, staff reviewed the request in accordance with section 3.3D2 of the code and offers the following findings. In terms of compatibility, we find that the use appears to be compatible with the surrounding land uses, uh, specifically the commercial uses on the south side of Geneva and um, is sufficiently separated from the residential uses on the north side of Geneva, which is a two-lane collector roadway. As Mr. Andrunas mentioned, the south side of Geneva um, is the, south of this site is the post office, east of it is the Sonical gas station, interstate battery, other office buildings, and then on its west side is Oviedo Laser um, and some other industrial buildings as well as a couple of vacant parcels. We evaluated the tra traffic impacts and based on the review of the potential traffic impacts, we find that the development of the warehouse use is not anticipated to result in any adverse impacts on Geneva Drive and will not degrade the level of service standard on that drive on that road below level of service E. Uh, we don't anticipate any off-site impacts um, as mentioned, there are wetlands on the site, and um, the site plan that we have does delineate the wetland line as well as the floodplain lines, um, and it appears that the development um, is staying outside of those areas. Um, we will require on the site plan a note that uh, prior to clearing, a gopher tortoise survey will need to be updated. Um, in terms of the criteria as to whether or not the site is of sufficient size to accommodate the development based on the requirements for infrastructure, uh, with the modification and the scaling down that Mr. Andrunas mentioned, that the site will be of sufficient size. Um, as to uh, Mr. Pollock's question on the two stories, um, if they were to go to one foot, one floor, it would widen their footprint and have a significant impact on their parking their, their um, uplands area available for parking. And parking has been a challenge with this site since um, the very the day one, basically. In terms of mitigative techniques, um, with the modified plan that they're going towards, they will provide additional bicycle parking spaces as well as what he mentioned, the LED lighting. Right now our code doesn't require LED lighting, so the, the LED would be considered an upgrade. Um, Geneva Drive, unfortunately, is a county road, and the county is, uh, I don't know that they have a lighting plan for that roadway. Um, 
in terms of the evaluation on the rest of that section, there's, we look at hazardous waste, whether or not the development complies with local laws and ordinances, whether um, if this were a residential district, we would look at a commercial component, but this isn't a residential district. Um, and staff finds that the applicant has provided sufficient um, narrative and mitigation for their proposed warehouse use. Uh, the city attorney has reviewed the resolution 3651-18 and found no legal objections. Um, per our standards and our processes, the exception use order must undergo two public hearings. This is the first of those two hearings. And um, with this board's approval, uh, should it approve it, the item will go to city council for the second and final public hearing on December 3rd. <coughs> there are no budgetary impacts anticipated, and the proposed office and warehouse use is consistent with the city's goal of advancing economic and vitality um, in the city for our strategic plan. With that, staff recommends approval of resolution 3651-18 to improve the special exception use order. And Thank that's you. all I have. Any questions of staff? Mr. Chair? Yes. The, um, the conclusion um, regarding the compatibility um, based on the warehouses being in the vicinity, the post office being one of them, the laser art center, and the other commercial properties, uh, they're all being of single story. Um, what considerations went into um, the conclusion that a two story warehouse facility would be compatible with surrounding commercial properties all being of one story characteristic? It's not as because it's a warehouse use, we look at compatibility in terms of its scale and its impacts. It is, um, it is a two-story facility, but in terms of the site impacts, off-site impacts, and traffic, it's very comparable to the other land uses that would generate like traffic patterns. So the compatibility um, uh, criteria goes more towards uh, the traffic generation than it goes towards whether it looks like other things around it? Yeah, I, I had my staff do a 500-foot uh, buffer of the site looking at the different businesses in the area and whether they're single-story or two-story. I did not bring that with me, but there are some other uses um, that I did mention that are two-story. So it's, it's a scattering of single and two-story buildings in that area. In, in that particular area, the, I'm familiar with that area. Um, the two-story area, the, the other two-story commercial structure is actually a veterinary practice, and it's it's two stories high, but it's a single story building with a really, really high roof. Mm -hmm. um, and the other two story structures are residential. Directly across the street from where this proposed um, two story warehouse is going to be is residential, low density residential properties. Um, and the buffer um, that's discussed in the, um, in the compatibility uh, portion is talking about Geneva Drive being a, a feeder road, or um, I forget what the terminology was, how, you, how it was collector described. Road. A collector road. But it's actually a, a really kind of a small two-story, I mean, two-lane, kind of a country road. It's really not a, it is a lot of traffic in the morning, a lot of traffic in the afternoon. And um, already with no businesses being there with just the gas station and the veterinary practice, um, it's already really difficult for cars to actually navigate that corner. There's some blind um, corners with fences, and it, it's just a really, as um, it's, it's a really difficult area. Right. Um, I'm not sure that I, uh, that the that it is completely compatible, being what the the scale of the project and what they're trying to put in the area, and and the traffic generation conclusion as well um, that it wouldn't have an impact on Geneva. Um, I think any structure in that area that generates any additional with 22 employees and five FedEx trucks that's going to have an impact on that area, and with traffic being what it is already in that corner and the danger, there's accidents there all the time from people mm -hmm. trying to turn. There's a stop sign there next to the Sunoco. There's accidents there all the time. I see them all the time. And it's even more difficult now that there's fences everywhere blocking line of sight. Um, so and anyway, that was, that's sort of my, how my, my question of how uh, staff came up with the conclusion about the traffic impact, the compatibility impact, and also the fact that there there's no residential uh, commercial um, impact because it's technically zoned commercial. But within 500 feet of this warehouse, there's actually low density residential. So to suggest that it's not, it doesn't have a, an impact on residential. I think there's not enough of a buffer there. I mean, a lot of neighbors in Mead Manor actually got letters saying, hey, you know, this is going to be 500 feet from your house. And they're like, what are you talking about? Where are they going to put a warehouse? They didn't realize it was across from Geneva. Because mm -hmm. there's actually a whole cul-de-sac of homes directly across the street right there on Geneva. 
um, behind the retention pond. So anyway, so that's I, I was all the, the question I have. Then I guess um, is were all those things considered in coming up with, and then the conclusion was that it wouldn't have an impact on traffic and compatibility in the residential commercial interactions. That well, we looked at the traffic in detail. We did use the tenth edition. Um, Basically, the traffic analysis showed that based on their original plan for 12,000 square feet of office and 35,000 square feet of warehouse, it was anticipated to generate 22 p.m. peak hour trips and 44 a.m. peak hour trips. With the reduction even more scaled down to what Mr. Andrews mentioned, it would probably cut that number to half. Um, the standard on Geneva is an E, which is so close to F. Um, based on the- We talked about that at the other meeting, yeah. about what, it's really an F. <laughs> yeah. So perception and what I, the, the the standard on the books versus perception on the road, um, they are two very different things. We did have two, three um, citizens come to ask us questions about it. The last person that came in this morning asked questions on safety as well. It is a county facility, um, and I mentioned in an email to to Mr. Wright that because it is a county facility, the city is somewhat limited in what we can require the applicant to do on that roadway. Um, I, as, as a planner, uh, I do see that there is a safety concern. Uh, one of the other gentlemen that came last week, he actually crosses Geneva. <laughs> I said I would drive. Um, <laughs> he crosses Geneva, and it is a very dangerous intersection. It's, they're not clearly marked crosswalks and things like that. The, the city staff would be happy um, to reach out to the county to see if we can start evaluating that section of Geneva and possibly making improvements to the intersection. But it boils down to whether or not the county's willing to do it and if, you know, to what extent the city would, would contribute towards those improvements since it's not our road. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention with respect to the lighting, um, even if he does provide the LED lighting on the entirety of the building, we do have a policy in the code that, that restricts any off-site um, spillover. Um, so with the approval of the site plan, we would look at that as well. So the, the light would not be cascading over to the residential side. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was really good. I asked you a lot of questions, and your answer was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for staff? Right. Mr. Chair, so um, Mike, looking at the site plan, I mean, it does mention in your notes that the site development order is still in, is currently in compliance review. So it mentions on here that the minimum building setbacks for the front is 30 feet. Is that what we are looking at as the setback off of Geneva Drive for that building one, that front building? Um, I'm not quite first on it. I do have a copy of the site plan, um, and I have copies of their, their review comments. Are you asking me if the setback is 30 feet? Or Correct. I mean, well, the site plan that we have here, uh, number seven over here on the notes on the right does say the minimum building setback for the front is 30 feet. So that's just what I guess my question is, are, is that what the site development order is looking at, is that setback off of Geneva Drive? Because I think it goes to Mr. Pollock's point about how, as you come around that corner, how much of that building impact is going to be there. I mean, I'm thinking if it's 30 feet back, that's not so bad because the snow goes probably roughly about the same to where the building site is. but. Um, but I guess because we haven't seen the site development order yet, that's just why I'm curious if that's what we are looking at. Yeah, to my knowledge, um, the building is meeting the setback requirements. I didn't see any setback deviations being requested. So they should be meeting the city's code as far as setbacks from a collector roadway. So in instances where a site, I'm sorry, in instances where a commercial site abuts a, com a collector or a trailer roadway, we don't necessarily look at the use on the other side. The first use is use is the roadway. So the code has standards for buffering against a collector and our arterial. So they would have to meet that standard. Okay. Because we're also looking at the site plan, it looks like the parking for building one is going to be to the side and not in front. So that should help increase the visibility there because you will have more of an open space rather than when a quarter sitting there. So I mean as long as it's not really a question, I guess, as long as I'm just saying that the site development order is taking that into consideration and this is what we're kind of looking at is what the site plan, mm -hmm. this is generally what it's probably going to be. You know, I'm, comfort I'm more comfortable now with looking at what that clearance is going to look like coming around that corner. I mean, I did mention that if we were expecting more heavier truck deliveries, I would kind of like to see a, the possibility of a turn lane in there being added. 
um, simply because, again, as you come down that hill and around that corner, you know, speed limit is 40, but we all know not everybody does the speed limit. And if there's suddenly a truck trying to turn in there and it's just sitting there because mm -hmm. of whatever reason, maybe there's another truck coming out and they can't. I mean, mm -hmm. something that's off the road, I would like to have taken into consideration there if that's expected long term that the deliveries might get larger or, you know, be more of an impact there. Yeah, we are um, hoping to have at least another progress meeting with the applicant and his civil um, before they submit their third compliance submittal. So we can certainly bring that up to see what we can do. The way the site, this that was handed to you is the very original one. Um, I'm sorry, the, the second submittal, what they're proposing will drop it down to two buildings. So there may be some room to make some adjustments and what have you. We can talk about that with the, um, the property owner at the progress meeting. But I will definitely note your concern to the development review manager as far as whether or not we can require that. Um, the other thing too is we will probably have to coordinate with the county. Um, I don't know if there's, I mean, if Mr. Junis is here, if he wants to speak to whether or not he would be willing to install a, a desal lane in that area. So it hasn't, it's not been something that's been brought up. Line of sight hasn't, Public Works has not brought that up as an issue during the site plan review. Mm -hmm. That's all I had. Mr. Chair, can I have one, one last question? Um, the, when, when the project went from uh, three buildings to two buildings, um, and I'm assuming that's the building one and then phase two building, mm -hmm. um, the phase three building, the reason why that was cut, and my understanding was that the, the mitigation impact of that financially just wasn't feasible, right? Right, because there's so <clears throat> little room here. Um, and also, as a clarification, what you see here isn't the building. It's just a dashed line of where... Um, the building could potentially be. The original plan was for each building to be about 6,300 square feet. Oh. So this is just a bubble of where, or a, um, a rectangle of where the building footprint might be located. So there is room to adjust some locations, but again, we still have yet to have that progress meeting to talk with their, with Mr. Andrunas <coughs> and his civil on, um, design, on designing the site prior to third submittal. The reason why I ask that question is I'm wondering if it's at all possible if the primary building is backed up further off of Geneva Drive and then having the primary entry and exit. I understand what they're trying to do with trying to have the trucks go out to the east, which is smart because, yeah, you can't make a left there. Um, but I'm wondering if we can, um, if the site plan can be designed in a way that utilizes Lloyd versus Geneva because that would al alleviate the, the, the interaction with Geneva, which I think is is my mm -hmm. concern in, in addition to having that primary two-story warehouse being a little bit further back from the residential area is that does the site allow that sort of modification without a ex tremendous expense or unreasonable expense to the um applicant? at this point without having seen what their third submittal is going to look like we can definitely bring that up um in terms of lloyd mr wright brought up this question earlier the one of the comments in the site plan review is an improvement to lloyd it, um, per the city's engineering standards, the, those improvements would include sidewalks, lighting, appropriate street trees, buffering, and all that. So um, the issue as, as far as, like I mentioned, as far as site distance and whatnot, that hasn't been brought up. Um, I can certainly ask Public Works to see if, if they have an issue with it specifically, but in terms of mo moving the building down, I think that it could be done as long as they maintain the uh, fire truck maneuvering around the parking lot. We can certainly entertain that. Because if, it, if we could avoid having to use Geneva, I, I think it would be of a less of an impact, I think. But anyway, that, that's my thought on that. But anyway, no more questions. Thank you. Any additional questions? Mr. Chair. Mr. White. Um, real quick for staff, the three things that we talked about in the staff report was the um, LED lighting, the additional parking, bicycle parking as a mitigation technique, but you had also mentioned like the gopher tortoise requirement. Um, I didn't see the gopher tortoise requirement written in the actual development um, special exception use order. I didn't see that anywhere. So I guess um, I'm not sure that's in there. Um, and the question to follow up on this is that are these, um, these three items, are they conditions that we need to include in any motion that we would make this evening? I know they're it's written in the order right now, but just want to make sure that we have to include those with our. Um, 
We have uh, 3C, which speaks to wetlands and other natural environmental um, environmental yeah, areas plus natural flora and fauna. And we also have um, E, which speaks to being consistent with other, um, you know, compliant with other general oh, laws. It, I'm sorry, it is there. You're right. It's in C. Yep. Yeah. I apologize. I didn't see that. Um, so then that erased that part of my question, but do we need to include these as conditions in the motion? Uh, if any recommendation that we would make tonight? Or is, oh, as far as the... As far as any any motion that was made tonight regarding this, do we need to include those in our motion? Or, or since they're written in there, are we good? They're, okay. they're in there. Um, A covers the additional bicycle parking spaces. Um, B, I'm sorry, C covers the gopher tortoises. Um, and A also covers the LED lighting. Okay, thank you. Um, so one of the, one of the questions, and, and for everybody's benefit, I asked some, I asked some questions earlier because you provided me some answers. Um, the traffic that we talked about. Um, mm -hmm. One of the comments that I made was that it's not so much the site, it was the way the calculation was done on the site plan. You clarified, you know, this one is just showing office use, which is only a percentage. Your calculations show that um, you've taken into consideration the warehouse percentage as well as the office percentage. Right. Um, and that with the reduced site, that number goes down. Um, just for my benefit in the future is that, um, and I pointed out to you, is that our report kind of said that we were making assumptions. We anticipate that there's not an issue. We didn't really have any um, data, per se. And especially now that the site plan is changing, this really isn't what we're looking at tonight. Mm -hmm. um, that was a concern for me. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously the concern I have is relative to, you know, previous con conversations that we've had relative to traffic. Um, this is a level of service E. There is no development on there now. We are adding trips. Whether it's one or 10, it doesn't really matter. We are adding stuff. Um, so I guess another thing that would have been helpful for me was to determine whether or not, um, as we've done in the past, it's C2, it has a maximum use, you know, a projected different differential that it's kind of already, uh, whatever we use, vested, encumbered, grandfathered in, that right. there already was a, a number. And so um, for me, help, it would be helpful for me to have a little bit better understanding or a little <coughs> bit more um, uh, information for us to be able to determine how we just came up with the phrase doesn't anticipate that it's going to be an issue when we already know, as you said, level of service E is one step above failing. So, right. um, so you you clarified. I don't really need an answer. It's just more of a helpful for me later on as a okay. as a board member. Um, the other question I had, with you know, that you answered for me was the again goes back to Lloyd, um, um, and I don't. I'm not trying to address engineering or Mr. Pollock's question, but, you know, when I look at this and, you know, the whole point of a site plan is to have circulation where, where larger vehicles, specifically our fire truck, can get in and out, um, you know, th there is no way for people to turn around inside this site and get out one exit. I understand the need for two exits, north and south. Um, I appreciate the fact that we're not trying to make a left on Geneva. I think that's a, a, a you know, a well thought out. Um, my only concern, and I addressed it with you today, is that, um, looking at what I have in front of me as a site plan. Lloyd Avenue looks like it's an unimproved road. Um, it's less than one lane. We're requiring 20 feet internal roads that they're at least, if we're going to give them an access to Lloyd, that I'm hoping that in our site development approval process, there will be some improvement at least to make that more of a, a functional road because as the applicant had even said tonight, they are planning on using that as their exit. So um, even more so, so, you know, I know we don't control that, but, um, from an engineer, you know, perspective uh, for our city, I'm hoping that that is, uh, you know, our, as you said, our thoughts are going to be pushed forward with the right. recommendation. Yeah, Public Works called that out. Our staff, as well as Public Works staff, called the improvements needed for Lloyd um, as part of it is, it's remained a comment in both the first compliance and second compliance. We're waiting to see, you know, what their third compliance is going to be. Okay. Um, one other question is, um, you know, the sidewalk along Geneva, it's not our street. We don't control it. Um, I know we have a requirement that we are putting in, you know, uh, pedestrian-friendly access. We need pedestrian access to the site from Geneva Drive. Um, doesn't appear there's any existing sidewalk out there on that side of the road anyways. I know we're only putting in a partial piece, which basically fronts the drive access <coughs> and the building. Um, 
I guess my question is, under normal circumstances, would we require the sidewalk to go the entire frontage of the property, regardless of whether it's being developed on or not? Um, um, my answer to that would be yes, we would normally require that. But given, because I, I went out there to put in the uh, public notice signs and I walked that frontage, and, and it is very dangerous. Um, having done a lot of pedestrian safety studies with Orange County and DOT, I, I wouldn't advise a sidewalk in that area because it's it's counterintuitive to put pedestrian facilities in an area where you know that a pedestrian might get squished. So um, I, we didn't push for a sidewalk on the western portion. Um, if there's a sidewalk there that's connected hopefully to the Sonico and the intersection, if the county chooses to improve the intersection, then anyone from the north side could actually walk to this site safely. Understood. Now, I, I understand. I guess my question is that the city's in a constant state of evolution. There is redevelopment. We encourage redevelopment of, of existing parcels. Um, this could be the beginning of redevelopment towards this area. You know, who knows? Um, mm -hmm. That if the development to the east decides to build, you know, redevelop, and the, the section to the west decides we're going to have a gap, somebody's going to be responsible for filling in the gap. Obviously, we can't go back to the property owner and say, you need to put a sidewalk in the front of your piece right. that you left out. This is why I asked, you know, we have a sidewalk fund. It's in our ESM. It's in our land development code that the contractor or the developer would contribute to that so that we could cover that cost in the future if we had to cover it. Um, but, you know, as you answered me, is that since it's not our road, how does that, how do we handle that situation? So, right. It, you asked a really great question. I will definitely um, round back with Brian tomorrow since Therese is not here because it's a city sidewalk fund um, unless the county is willing to extend the sidewalk along their road it's i don't know if we could allocate city sidewalk funds to a sidewalk facility on our county roadway so i can look into that some more and and i guess my, i'm emphasizing this you know under the circumstances that we've we've put conditions on the site to add more bicycle parking but we really don't have a way for a bicycle to get there you know in a let's call it ease or a safe manner. There are no bike lanes on Geneva Drive. Mm -hmm. There are no, you know, uh, pedestrian friendly real sidewalks, you know, for bike lanes, which are eight foot wide. Um, so it, it kind of contradicts again for me um, what's what actually could happen out there. You know, I know we're putting condition of bike additional rack, but unless somebody's willing to ride the side of the road, we're... I don't know if there's, is there a sidewalk? Mr. There's a sidewalk on the north on side. The north side. North side. Yeah. 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 It would be great if the county improves that intersection and actually puts in a. Um, yeah. When I went out there, I didn't see any designated crosswalks. If that were the as case. A, as a as a as a suggestion, you know, instead of putting, it would have been made more sense to put effort into putting a, a pedestrian crossing sign, you know, from the other side of Geneva Drive, flashing yellow light like we do on other bike trails and bike areas and stuff like that. It might be a better use than trying to put a, a sidewalk that doesn't really go anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. in a sense. So, um, and I'm understanding we can't pass that, but these are questions I'm putting out because we don't have an opportunity to really talk to the engineering section, you know, the people that will actually review the SDO on this one. So, okay. um, that was all I had. Thank you very much for answering my questions. Today. You're very welcome. helpful. Any additional questions from the board? Okay. Seeing that, what's the pleasure? We need it's a public hearing, so we need to. Oh, that's right. You're right. Is there any public comments on this? Seeing none, we'll close it. What's the pleasure of the board? <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to recommend adoption of resolution number 3651-18. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Can we have discussion on it? Oh, that's great. Discussion. Go ahead. Um, maybe recommend. No, no, you're right. I, um, the uh, here's my conflict, and, and this is one to discuss with you in front of the applicant, obviously. So I know that area well. I live in that neighborhood. Um, when I first saw that sign go up months and months and months ago, maybe a year ago, I don't remember, and I was like, oh, this looks cool because it's exciting to see new growth in an area that you know has sort of just been sitting there waiting to be developed. Um, the issue here is that it's really a bad site, <laughs> you know, and it's not the applicant's fault. He owns the land and he has the right to develop it, and he's willing to work with the city in order to meet the special exception requirements. 
I'm not convinced, though, that at this point the special we have enough information to establish the special exceptions um, requirements are met without additional details on the site plan and how the site's going to be developed. There's too many question marks for me. I don't know how Lloyd is going to be if Lloyd is going to be improved, how it'll be improved. We don't know how access to the site is going to play out. We don't know. There's just so much we don't know about how that site's going to move forward. I understand it's just a recommendation. Um, so that's my first con uh, conflict with this, is that I'm not sure really the whole scope of the project at this point based on the changes. My second concern is that intersection. And I understand it would be nice if they improved it. They haven't at this point, and I don't know what they will. Whether or not we want to proceed with the, with the issues that we have in our community right now of, you know, growth, then go behind the growth and try to figure out how to make it work? Uh, are we putting the cart before the horse in this one, improving another development in an area that's undeveloped right now and unimproved, where there's going to add even more traffic to an already identified dangerous place that's really not a great road and really not a very good pedestrian place where there's already accidents and issues with the traffic. And that, that's my conflict with this. I want to see that area improved. I think the Apple's going to put a beautiful building there. It looks nice. I think it's going to make the neighborhood nicer. At the same time, it's going to also make it a little bit more dangerous. And then my third conflict with this is that now we're putting a two-story warehouse really right next to low density residential. It's been there for 30 years. And is that enough of a transition from the commercial that's already there to residential is there? And is it kind of just smacking right in the face of the people who live there with, uh, you know, within 500 feet of that? So these are all the things I'm struggling with. And I, I don't know how I, I want to vote on this one way or the other. I just wanted to discuss those things with the board and let you know what I'm thinking. I mean, the staff has done a great job developing this. The applicant has answered the questions. Everybody's done a great job. I just don't know how I feel about this. I just don't know if I have enough information to get behind it. That's just my thought. Well, I, I mean, for the last month, I also live out this direction now, which is how I know how that curve is every day, kind of coming down from the city back home. I look at this as it's commercial. It's inevitable it would probably be developed at some point. The amount of traffic that this is going to generate is a lot less than even what's sitting right next door. You know, just going to the daily traffic that goes in and out of that Snoco station. Um, so, I mean, from a traffic standpoint, yes, it's adding more trips. We can avoid that, but this would be a lot worse. Um, I get to what you're saying about the two-story building across from the house, but then again, the amount of noise that comes in and out of that gas station isn't going to be any worse than I think than sitting there looking at a two-story building across the street. And again, given what I look at just down the road, and you have the, the other warehouse buildings that are close by are so close to the road that you really can see it right there as you make that turn. Um, that's why I asked about the setback. So I'm more comfortable with the fact that if it is going to sit at least 30 feet back with no parking in front of it, you know, that's actually pretty good buffer there looking at between the residential, the road, and then what's sitting next door. Uh, the sidewalk, I mean, we can talk all day that it, you know, the intersection hasn't been improved, but there's going to be no reason for the county or the city to improve the intersection if nothing else does get built there. So you're, you know, Mr. Wright, your question about, you know, the sidewalk going to nowhere, well, if they put the sidewalk in, connects to the front, front end of the Snowco station, they improve the intersect. Then they could improve the intersection to build a crosswalk over the sidewalk on the other side, and suddenly now you do have a bike way to get in and out of there. But I think, like you said, if we don't do the sidewalk now, and then the intersection gets improved later, it's going to be tough to go back and do it. Um, I just I think it's one of those chicken before the eggs. I don't see that intersection or Boy Lane ever getting improved if that site remains vacant, because there's going to be no reason to. There's no, there's just no emphasis, you know, incentive to do so. So, I'm okay with this because I look at the alternatives of this C2. If it was something else that would have much more of an impact on the area. Any other comments? Sorry, Curtis. Mr. I, Chairman, may I? Sure. Um, based on the comp plan, there that site, based on the net um, uplands, non wetland site, and the C2 the property could be developed with 59,000 square feet of commercial, whether it's office or retail or what have you. That's based on the comp plan as it exists today without a special exception use order. Thank you. I'm going to put my two cents in for what it's worth. Uh, I have to agree with Mr. Benton as well. I mean, this is a new and it's a, it's a beautiful building. The area needs to improve. I mean, there's other commercial area in that area that could use some improvement. Maybe this will be the jolt that they need to revamp some of those other buildings in that area. 
I mean, the road situation is, is going to be what it is for the time being. Hopefully that will improve that over the time. That's it. Any other statement, questions, comments? Okay. Seeing none, I'll take the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good this will be taken. This, good luck. It will be taken up with the City Council on December 3rd at that meeting. Good luck. We have uh, it's. We have any discussion items anyone that brings up? No discussion items. Okay. Uh, future meetings: Tuesday, November twentieth. We have no meeting. December fourth, regular meeting. Eighteenth uh, of December, we're off. No meeting. <laughs> uh, January first is also no meeting, and we're back to a regular meeting on the fifteenth. Is anybody going to be out of town any of those meetings? Please let Dalia know. Okay. I thought I'd know, but I do have a question. What's that? Well, I do have a question. Okay. Our current terms, we serve through the 4th, right? It would be January that would be the reset? I yeah. don't Because know. the council doesn't meet again until the 3rd to even make the decision of who has applied or any of us that requested renewal. So I would assume that, I, that since that's the day before. <laughs> that I don't know. I could ask Barbara okay. with, the, with the, the city clerk. Did everybody submit their re read letters? I just put your name on one. <laughs> <laughs> I love his non-committal answer. Right? <laughs> you left me, you're just scratching your head of what did he mean? I we got nothing. So, all right. So, I mean, that would just, I mean, we're talking about future meeting dates. Our next one would be, December. I'm just making sure. So, I guess, what, you know, the set going up, so. But we'll know by the 15th of January. Hmm. Reappointed. Okay. Or not reappointed. I was more concerned about the imagine, December meeting. That I, I would imagine we usually get notified we've been reappointed. So if they choose to keep us, then we'll not show up on the fifteenth. <laughs> well, what I'm saying, yeah. Well, I, know for, that's what I'm saying. I know for the fifteenth, I was more concerned about the fourth because their meeting is the third. So we would fly out that night to the next night. That's, that's when, why I assume we're in committed to the fourth. It's January. I think it's the reset. But. When do they swear in the new city council? Uh, it depends. It could happen it, it's immediately, almost. Right, so but they wouldn't make the decision. They made the decision. But they make the decision, decision at a council meeting, after. and that would not be till the third. Yeah, yeah they make the decision on the third. If right, right, because I remember they December. did when um, the current seats that are open were sworn in. I remember but, they made the decision then. But it was a little bit different because that one was mid-November meeting. This time, because of Thanksgiving, they're not meeting again until December third. Okay. All right. Cool. Nothing else. Motion to adjourn. So moved. So, second. All those in favor? Aye.